Welcome to Richard and Greg, a channel dedicated to discussion, debate and argument on a whole array of topics. Today we talk to Greg about the current figures, the coronavirus figures that is, and troubling issues within Mexico, China and the United States of America. So let's go over to Greg for an update. Welcome to Richard and Greg. The date is Thursday the 14th of May 2020 and the time is just shy of 1900 hours GMT plus one. This is a coronavirus update with over 4,400,000 cases worldwide and 300,000 deaths. We're going to go over to Greg because there are some quite interesting developments in Mexico and China that I know that Greg is itching to speak about. Greg, good evening. Good evening. Um, and not a good evening if you live in Mexico or China, as far as I can work out. Um, let's start out with Mexico. They are quoting figures and yet Sky have had one of their crack news teams touring Mexico visiting hospitals, many hospitals in and around Mexico City and elsewhere. They are estimating that the figures put forward for Mexico are at least five times larger than is being quoted. They have been into and shown photographs, trees, undertakers, um, facilities in hospitals where every fridge is full and bodies are stacked on pallets. There are autopsy facilities that cannot be used because they're being used at the moment to store bodies. The crematoria in Mexico City are going flat out and apparently functioning 24 hour day. And yet they are unable to cope with the deaths and are turning people away if there is a possibility they can get buried somewhere. And also they are using industrial incinerators that weren't designed for crematoria. The problem seems massive in Mexico and it's being wildly downplayed because Mexico does not have a strong enough economy to be able to sustain its people if it has a major lockdown. And there is absolutely no sign of social distancing because Mexico City particularly is incredibly crowded and it is almost impossible to move about in Mexico City without being within a meter of people, leave alone two meters. So good luck Mexico. Uh, this is going to run and run and run, not just in Mexico. We have Donald Trump at the moment in a full out uh, disagreement with his own medical authorities who are saying that going back to work and relinquishing the lockdown concept and permitting everyone to go back to work and Trump's belief that children should go back to school to liberate parents to go to work is going to lead to not just a second spike but an absolute burgeoning of the disease and it does look very much as if Trump has pinned his entire hopes for the next election on the economy with no other string to his bow and the economy is inevitably going to be in dire trouble 
whether they go back to work or not. We're talking of 30 million currently additional unemployed in America. It may be good for Jeff Bezos, who is now heading as a result of so many people in America purchasing online through Amazon, is now heading to be the world's first trillionaire. But does it make sense to only think of the money and the hell with the people? But I guess if you're in Trump's position, he stands a very dangerous pos position if he fails to get elected. Then we have China, which relaxed its lockdown in Wuhan, but now has introduced lockdown in two other areas of China where they have had outbreaks. And as somebody rightly said, Wuhan started with one person. One area has got 15 people with the disease and in critical condition. And another area where there is a, a city, not a huge city, but a city, there are six cases and they are desperately trying to trace who these people have been in touch with. The region of China where they have, I think it was 16 cases, all seem to have emanated from one 48 year old woman who interestingly has not traveled, has not been out of the area, has not been in touch with anyone who can reasonably be believed to have the disease. And yet she has it. One speculation has been that she caught it from work clothes issued to her at work, but this is very tenuous. But either way, China is heading for yet more problems. Australia and New Zealand with their tiny populations and large areas, because don't forget that New Zealand may have virtually no serious cases and deaths, etc. However, they've only got 4.8 million people. That's half the size of London in a country which is larger in area than Britain. In China, uh, sorry, in New Zealand, they stand a greater chance, I submit, of getting anthrax because the number of sheep outweigh the number of people on the two islands. Well, I say two islands, I think you'll find it's two major islands and something like 600 coastal islands. It's a very, very spread out country. A very low percentage of New Zealanders have even been to the south of South Island. They may travel the world, but their own country is all but deserted, which is why they have such a good record with coronavirus. However, they cannot maintain this because they cannot live in isolation. They are dependent on exports. They have no major export industry. They're not great car makers or um, industrial machinery or the like. They export a lot of mutton they export butter and they export um, those furry green things that are all but inedible in salad. And there's not much else they export except that they sold off much of South Island to the Japanese for the iron sands 
on the west southwest coast of the island australia is in a similar position they also do not have oil and have to import they are dependent on the export of coal particularly to china and their export business is essential australia has a tiny population despite the fact that it's a continent it's so large but realistically it's a strip down the eastern seaboard 20 miles wide about five cities none of them very big a road across from one side to the other to perth and halfway across you can turn right and go to alice springs and darwin um, which are huge distances so the disease can be confined in different areas but the moment that it has to open up for exports imports tourism and visits from many relations of people who live in australia they will be in dire trouble when now looking i note at authorities around the world recognized medical authorities making exactly the same comment richard and i were making when we first started doing this series which was this will run and run it may very well never be mastered and will just become an endemic disease that we have to learn to live with the same as aids and hiv and malaria we have been spending huge quantities of money trying to find cures for aids hiv malaria and the like but as yet we have no solution to these problems we merely have a means of keeping people alive with the disease okay that is better than than dying but they have a very prescribed life and it is exceedingly costly to keep them alive this could run and run there is no reason to believe that we will find a vaccine and there is no chance of finding a vaccine and having it implemented on a wide enough scale to make it relevant within two years whatever happens so expect part of your life to be curbed in some way for at least the next couple of years this will cause economic downturn the people who will be able to capitalize on it are few and far between relative to those who will find that it brings with it hardship there are many people saying that taking the measures we're currently taking makes the cure worse than the solution so this means that there will be many people who will find food and finance extremely difficult to come by already there are somewhere in the region of a million people in and around johannesburg who are now facing dire problems in terms of the simple aspect of food greg on that rather depressing note we have to round this up but as we were speaking i can confirm that literally in the last minute the united states has now reported 
in excess of 86,000 deaths. Now, we said, I think I'm right in saying that last Sunday, we said that by next Sunday, we could very well reach 100,000. Uh, President Trump has criticized Fauci, saying, basically saying that Fauci is arguing on both sides. Nobody really quite knows what he means by that. But he's okay, also okay. now, well, he's also now started to declare that the figures are artificially too high, whereas Fauci has said, if anything, they're on the low side, artificially too low. Just in a nutshell, and it has to be a nutshell, Greg, what's your final comment? You and I have said from the very beginning that the figures are just not reliable for any country that is giving figures. I do applaud the efforts of the British government who have tried very hard to produce transparent figures. They have also taken into consideration the ONS, the Office of National Statistics, and their continuous database on such things as death and births and the figure that they are comparing the virus deaths with is the number of excess deaths over the median average for this given week in the year. Our figures look fairly accurate. I'm not saying that they're 100%, but there is no doubt they are striving to make them as accurate and transparent as they possibly can. I appreciate that the media, due to lack of training, lack of competence and lack of ability, can only posture and ask childish questions. And some indication is one of the major local uh, newspapers has actually furloughed their political editor, which does show, realistically, they haven't got a clue what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And this exacerbates the problems of the posturing of opposition parties who are looking to actually oust governments to get into the hot seat only so that they can make a total mess of it we even have areas of governance where they are saying that they're trying to delay upcoming elections well hardly surprising many of those individuals who currently hold seats will lose their seat and they know damn well that in the real world they're going to find that they are unemployable. So they are trying to hang on to their seats for as long as possible. Greg, thank you very much. A prime example to all our listeners that when you're asked a question that you don't really want to answer, you deflect. I asked about Trump and he talks about Britain. Greg, thank you so much. We'd already talked about Trump. <laughs> bye bye, Greg. Cheerio. We hope you enjoyed that discussion, and if so, kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of our videos as and when they are published. And also in the description box below, we place links to certain books, articles and programs which you may find of benefit, and for which we will receive a small commission should you purchase through our link and this will help support our channel and to enable us to develop it further.